Hi and welcome back to another Ableton Live tutorial video. My name is Don and today we are going to be talking about using resonators within Ableton Live. Now for this example we are going to be using resonators with a drum kit and by doing this we are going to get some unique melodic and you know harmonic sounds that work along with our drum patterns and you know get something interesting working with that. So here's what we have on our software. Okay we are using Ableton Live 10. I've already gone ahead and I've made a 606 drum kit, a very uh, you know basic drum kit. I've made a beat and on top of this beat I'm going to start using resonators in order to add some harmonic content to this. So let's listen to the normal beat that I have. All right now I'm going to start adding resonators to this and you know make something fun. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create an audio track. Just expand that. And then I'm going to go into my browser and under my audio effects, I am going to add resonators to that audio track. Okay. Now, once that's added, you can see that resonator has loaded to the bottom over here in our device view. And once you open up Resonators, the first thing you see is a filter section and what's that, what that is going to do is it's going to filter out frequencies from your input signal. And above that we also have uh, five Resonators. Now what is Resonators? Uh, basically according to the manuals, it's five parallel uh, Resonators that superimpose a tonal character to the input source. Now what that means is we're going to be adding harmonics above and below an input signal. That is whatever signal we're going to be uh, running through our resonators. In this case, it's going to be our drum kick, the kit. So the first thing we have to do is we have to, you know, do some routing, make sure that parts of our drum kit is going into the actual channel that has resonators on it. So on the audio channel that we have put resonators, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my audio from section. I am going to choose my 606 core kit and then I'm going to choose my kick. Okay. And you also want to make sure that your monitor section is set to input. So it's constantly playing back the input signal, which is the kick in this case. So now once I do that, I can play and you can hear this harmonic sound that's being played along with the kick. And if I solo this channel, right, you can hear that. So, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go into my resonators and I'm going to put it all the way to wet. Okay, I don't need a dry wet ratio over here because I'm playing the kick at the same time with the entire drum kit. So, I don't need that dry wet ratio because I can control it from the channel itself. So, now I set it into wet completely. And you can hear a tonal sound. Now, getting into the resonator over here and how we're going to start manipulating this and start creating um, you know, some interesting sounds is through these resonators. So we have five resonators listed over here. Now these resonators, like we said, they're going to start adding harmonic content above and below, um, you know, the actual, uh, the pitch that we set over here. And the pitch that we set will happen on this first resonator. Okay, you can see that it's given us a note and we can choose a root note. So for the kick, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this to C1 because we want kind of a you know, a lower sound. Now, once that is set, the other resonators, two through five, I can set them as harmonics to the actual note that I've just set on resonator one. Now, you have to also keep in mind that these resonators are panned. So two and four are panned to the left, whereas three and five are panned to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that my notes are harmonic. So I'm going to add three semitones on my second resonator, just add three in there. I'm going to add three also on my third resonator because remember it's panned. Okay, and on my fourth I'm going to make it seven and on my fifth I'm going to make it seven as well. And now when I play, right, I have this interesting sound. Now I can adjust my filter if I want to open that up, make it a low pass. Okay. I can also adjust the decay to, you know, adjust the note lengths. And I can also adjust the color. Let me 
maybe add some gain. And now when I play it with my kick drum, Right? And I've added some, you know, tonal element to my kick. Now I can take this a step further by now starting to add this to my snare and my hi-hats. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add another audio track. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and drop resonators on that audio track. And again, I'm going to set my 606 kit. And this time I'm going to choose my snare. So... I'm going to make sure that my monitor is set. So we can see that a signal is actually coming into this channel. Again, I'm going to go ahead and set this all the way to wet. Right? I'm going to leave this position at C2 because I want it to be a little in between. So I'm just going to keep it at C2. And on my pitch resonators, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Let's go down by 12 semitones on this one. Okay, by a whole octave. I'll do the same thing on the second resonator. And on my fourth and fifth, I'm going to go up by 12. And let's see how that sounds. Right? Kind of an interesting stringy sound. Let's give it some decay. Maybe adjust that color. Maybe give it a high pass filter. And let's see how that sounds. Right? So you can see how this is building up. We're getting a lot more tonal elements that's working with our actual drum hits. Okay? And for the last one, I'm going to just do the same thing again. Open up a audio track. I'm going to go ahead and load resonators on that track. I'm going to go to my audio from section. Select my core kit. And I'm going to put this on my uh, hats this time. So I'll choose my hats. Make sure my monitor section is on. Okay. So you can hear that it's going through that. Again, I'm going to put it all the way to wet. And I'm going to take the note up a bit. So I'm going to put it to C3. Let's get to C3, right? So that, you know, it's a bit of a, you know, higher pitch to work with. And I'm going to do the same thing. So let's go minus 12 semitones here. Minus 12 semitones here. I'm doing this, remember, because, you know, these different oscillators are panned left and right. So I want to make sure that it sounds a little even. Um, if you want to get some freaky sounds, you don't have to make sure they're evenly panned. You can play around with that pan and get some interesting sounds. But... For the sake of this example, I'm just going to keep it even. Now, let me adjust my filter. Let's see what I have. Okay. It's a little on the high side. I'm just going to give it some gain so it comes through. And let's see how the entire thing sounds together. All right. So you have this really cool melodic groove that's working along with our actual, uh, you know, drum, you know, our drum beat. All right, so now that we have this setup and we have this really great sound, um, you know, we can start working with some effects. What I can also do is I can add, you know, a delay on, um, you know, something, you know, let's say, for example, our, um, you know, the hats. I can just go ahead and, you know, maybe use a ping pong delay. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that in. Not going to make too many changes. Let's just see how that sounds. Okay, if I turn that off, turn it back on. Okay. And there you go. It's a great way to start adding some 
you know interesting sounds to your to your to your track by just using resonators um you know we didn't write in any melodic sounds we're just using effects and playing around and getting some you know really cool uh, harmonic sounds just by working off our existing drum sounds so i hope this was helpful uh, again if you liked the video make sure to leave a like if you loved it subscribe and i'll see you in the next one